Hello friends and welcome to the North Georgia Wine Club Wine Tasting for July 2024. Tonight we will be grabbing our white wine glasses and traveling not to the Loire Valley in France but to the South African wine region to taste the beautiful varietal Chenin Blanc. Chenin Blanc is known as a bright and juicy warm and creamy grape that will transport you to the warm South African coast with the first sip. Chenin Blanc has often been seen as just a utility grape rather than the incredibly versatile varietal it could be. But thanks to the efforts from winemakers and sommeliers in South Africa who recognized its value and potential, Chenin Blanc has been growing in popularity. Tonight we'll explore the grape, its history, the South African wine regions, Chenin Blanc's wine styles and taste. One of the most versatile grapes in the world, it makes everything from delicate sparklers or champagne or cava to bold and sweet dessert wines in many different regions around the world. Before the 21st century, the notion of South Africa being a wine powerhouse would have been seen by your average wine drinker as just silly. But South Africa was producing some of the world's best wines before the United States ever existed and Chenin Blanc has been a huge part of that history. The Chenin Blanc grape originated in the Anjou region of France's Loire Valley. It's an offspring of the white wine grape, which is spelled S-A-V-A-G-N-I-N, Savagin, from the Jura region, which is spelled J-U-R-A, and it shares a sibling relationship with the Trousseau and Sauvignon Blanc grapes. Its name comes from Mont Chenin in Terrain, a wine region that lies to the east of Anjou. The earliest mentions of Chenin Blanc were in two royal land grants of Charles the Bald in 845. This was detailed in the records of the Abbey Glanfuel describing the grapes grown along the Loire River banks. In 1655, Dutch navigator Jan van Riebach from the Dutch East India Company, brought grapevine cuttings with him, including Chenin Blanc. He brought these to the Cape Colony in South Africa. Here it is known as Steen, which you see on some of the bottles we have tonight, where it eventually became South Africa's signature white grape. Ampelographers were not able to concretely identify the numerous plantings of Steen around the country as being Chenin Blanc until 1965. In the late 1960s and early 70s, Chenin Blanc was a principal grape in the South African wine industry's white wine renaissance. This was ushered in by the introduction of new technologies such as temperature controlled fermentation vessels. It's taken time for Chenin Blanc's potential to be recognized in the new world. Today, it continues to thrive in South Africa and interest has re-sparked in California as winemakers experiment with this fascinating grape. California planted it throughout much of the 20th century, but used it mainly as a cheap blending grape, but this is changing. When we look at the top wine producing regions in the world, South Africa is number seven, tied with China at 4%. China has continued to grow while South Africa is growing at a slower pace. Every wine region in South Africa produces Chenin Blanc, possibly because its naturally high acidity balances well with the largely warmer climate. You can see here 11% of South America production is Chenin Blanc. But what's very interesting is Sauvignon Blanc's at nine, but other grapes is, makes up 41% of their production. Chenin Blanc old vines are still used to make precious and elegant fine wine. So it might be ubiquitous amongst the different types but it's still respected and a force to be reckoned with. Chenin Blanc is also well loved in South Africa for its part in making Cap Classique. While some of the best loved sparklers come from cooler regions, this one sets itself apart with the rich fruitiness that comes from being made in a warmer climate. One very interesting thing that I learned about South Africa and why their climate is so interesting is what they call the Cape Doctor. And this is a southwesterly wind that is most influential. 
It vehemently blows during spring and summer, which inhibits the development of various mildew diseases in the vineyard and makes this Cape and South Africa the perfect wine region. As we said earlier, the Cape wine country is the seventh largest producing wine market in the world. It employs 300,000 people and it's made up of approximately 93,000 hectares or 230,000 acres. And the vineyards are split 45% red, 55% white. And approximately 50% of the wine produced is used for various export markets, the majority going through out Europe. Tonight, we have wines from Swartland, Stellenbosch, Bredelkopf Valley, and of course the Western Cape, which is probably a blend. Well, now it's time to taste. And we're gonna first look at the wine, and Chenin Blanc may have many different types of colors from pale straw all the way up to pale amber. And now that we've had our look, it's time to smell and get an aroma of what's in the glass. We have many different regions, so these are just some that we may smell. Yellow apple, pear, apricot, dried pineapple, or grass. But it'll be very interesting with the number of um, regions on what type of aromas we smell tonight. Now we come to the wine profile. And keep in mind that we have wines from two to three different regions and also some blends. So we may taste many different things. But the flavors that we could be looking for are apple, pineapple, pear, spice, and peach. The acidity will be high, the body will be low, tannins will be very low, and dryness will be medium with an alcohol content of 12 to 14.5%. Well, it's time to taste Chenin Blanc, and I hope this presentation has given you a little bit better background on the Chenin Blanc grape, its history, and also the South African wine region. And for tonight's toast, I'd like to read what Jan van Riebach said on 2nd of February, 1659. Today, praise be to God, wine was made for the first time from Cape Grapes. Salute.